Okay, we're looking at, well, we're squeezing three books in today, just because they have the same theme. So this is book, and these are letters as well. 52, 53, 54. Now, 52 and 53 are called First and Second Timothy. Now, why do you think they're called Timothy? Simon. Yes, he was. But what are these books specifically? These were letters to these people. Right? So Timothy is where Timothy gets his name. Right? And Titus, so Timothy was the first bishop at Ephesus, and Titus was a bishop in Crete. Right? So these were three letters written by Paul. If you remember, we were talking about Paul. We're still on Paul's letters. There's three letters written to Timothy. He wrote a second letter to Timothy. And he wrote a letter to Titus. Now these letters are what are known as the pastoral epistles. People call them the pastoral epistles. Why? Because they were written, written to the leaders in the church. Right? Timothy and Titus, they were the bishops in the churches that they pastored. And people know these letters as the pastoral epistles. Can you guys say that? Pastoral epistles. Yeah, what does that mean? That means they're letters written to leaders in the church. And what we learn here, especially in these ones, is because these are written to the leaders, they're told, hey, you need to be a good example to everybody, right? So you remember Paul went out preaching, and now he's writing his letters, he's writing to the different churches, but he also wrote some letters to specific people that were open letters. So everyone got to know what that letter was about, but it was written to a specific person in mind. I just want to share this one verse with you from 1 Timothy. Four, chap chapter 4 verse 12 it says let no man despise thy youth what is this saying it's saying don't let anyone think less of you because you're young you know so you may be younger than somebody else but that doesn't mean you can't be a good leader but be thou an example of the believers what he's saying here even though you may be younger especially you guys right you guys are all younger you guys are the youngest people in our church, right? Younger than the adults. It says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. What does that mean? To be an example, it means you, you do good, so you show others how to be good, right? So you obey God, and then you can show others how to obey God. That's what it means to be an example to somebody else, right? So just like when we play games sometimes, right? We play games if you play the right way. So you play in a loving way and you serve one another, you help each other to have fun. You can be a good example to everybody else. You see here, but be thou an example of the believers in word. So how you talk, right? In conversation, this is how you behave yourself. In the Bible, that word is used to say how you behave, how you act. So what you say, how you act in charity, how you serve each other, in charity and in love, in spirit. What does that mean? How can you be an example in spirit? This is your attitude, right? Whether you're angry, whether you're grumpy, or whether you're happy, right? You can be an example as well and show people, hey, how to be happy at church. In faith, an example in what you believe and how you trust God. And in purity, this one is important as well, purity, staying pure, you know, only doing things within marriage that are meant to be in marriage. Some people, they outside of marriage, they're hugging and kissing and things like that with the opposite gender, and that's not correct, that's not right. So we want to be pure. All right, let's read this one together, you ready? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Very good. So we want to be a good leader. That's what this, this verses are about. And you want to be an example when you lead. So look at this picture here. Here's an example of a good leader. Here's an example of a bad type of leader. How does a bad leader act? Well, when there's all this work to do, 
Everybody else is doing the work. And look, a manager, not a leader, he's just telling everybody else what to do. Is that being an example? Telling everybody else what to do, but you don't do it yourself. No, see? So he's just saying, you guys do the work. But what's a good leader? When there's work to do, you see this big heavy ball here, they're all trying to pull it. When there's work to do, what does the leader do? The leader gets right in front, tries to pull the most weight. See, and that's leading by example. See how he's doing what he expects everybody else to do. But here, he's just telling everybody else what he's not doing. Okay? So that's not the sort of leader you want to be. You don't want to say to everybody else, hey, you should do this and you should do it that way. Right? You're doing it the wrong way this way. But you don't do it yourself. Right? That's called hypocrisy. Okay? But you want to be able to say to everybody, hey, you do it this way and I'm going to do it even better and even harder. And that's how you be a good leader. That's how you be a good example, like we learned here. Be thou an example of the believers. Okay? So that's where you lead by example. You get in front rather than just telling everybody else how to do it when you're not doing it yourself. And who was the best example of a great leader? Simon. Jesus. Jesus, that's right. Because he not only tells us to submit to God and obey and humble yourself, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He's a perfect example for us to follow. All right, I hope you learned something there about the pastoral epistles, about being a good leader. We want to lead by example, don't we? How we act, we want to show others the right thing to do. We don't want to just tell everybody how to do things. All right, we're going to play some games today. It's a beautiful day. Let's go outside.